Hey, it's Krista, Beta Chickadee, and today I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about some tools that I have in my beading kit that you might really benefit from also adding to your kit. So let's get started. Hey, today I just wanted to talk about a really useful tool that I use as a beater uh, and a traditional artist, and it's these round nose pliers. So you can see these pliers, they have round little graspy parts here. They come in different sizes. You can get them really narrow, really wide, short little travel ones, bigger ones like this. This one's part of a set that came with um, a cutter and a couple other styles of pliers. Um, I really like them. I especially like the ones that have this kind of spring design. You know, they kind of um, stay in an open position and you have to just pinch them. Uh, one thing to te test is to make sure that they actually meet up at the tip. I don't know if you can see where these two actually meet up. And I like them because not only for playing with jewelry pieces like bending metal, making jump rings, um, closing rings, things like that, but also when I'm pulling my needles through, for example, I'm edging these earrings right now. So these are um, hand tan deer hide on the back. Um, I'm using some braided fishing line for the thread. And I'm just going to demonstrate so I'm putting through the material here. And when I pull the needle through, sometimes where that thread is in the eye can get a little stuck. And this is where these pliers are so helpful because they will grab the needle but they won't bend it. I just give it a, a quick tug. Always pull um, so the needle's coming out straight. And then I can just pull on this thread and close that stitch. And so these pliers just save my fingers, save my material, save my needle, save my patience. And so definitely worthwhile to put into your beading kit. This is another tool I have in my kit that is an absolute lifesaver, these um, tweezers now. These were inexpensive. I got them at a Canadian place called London Drugs. I think I paid $5.99 Canadian for this set of two and they do a really good job. I really like these really fine tip ones. I'm trying to get out of the package. Um, they're wonderful for grasping little tiny beads, getting those threads, or when I'm pulling out uh, paper, when I'm, you know, after my uh, finished my template and pulling off that um, paper pattern. This helps get under the beads and get all those little bits. This one is a little bit bigger. Um, I might use it for grabbing bigger things or holding uh, pieces together as I'm about to stitch. And really find some place. Um, I won't necessarily use these to pull needles through anything because of that sharp edge. It can actually damage or bend or even break your needle. So not something I use for that but definitely is a really good little grasping tool. They are uh, really really wonderful to have and uh, definitely worthwhile, worth the investment. Don't go too expensive. You can probably find place some Good ones at you know even discount stores. I used to have a pair from another firm called Dollarama that I used to really love and they got lost somewhere but um, yeah definitely worthwhile to have in your kit. Something that you obviously can't read without is good thread. I'm a little bit brand loyal. I do like the Nymo brand thread. There are some good thread, brands of thread out there, beading threads. This one is just one that is readily available to me and I like the quality. And you can see I have this big spool. Now just think, I've used this a fair bit. That thread used to come to right there. So I've used quite a bit of it, but you get these big spools, but not so good for traveling. You can see I have a hair elastic on here to keep it from unwinding. Um, a tip and uh, trick I learned from an elder friend of mine. But then for traveling, I actually invest in these little bobbins and they're fantastic. You can get them in different colors too. So if you're doing a really special project and you want to match thread color with your backing, or if you're using the thread to actually help tell the story, uh, you can get different colors. But um, these are wonderful for traveling because they're small. You get about 70 some meters. I think these are 72 yards on one of these spools. And um, I mean, relatively inexpensive. Great if you're starting for you're starting to bead because I think you can buy these for under $5 retail, whereas something like this can be $40 to $70 retail. So you can imagine that could be quite daunting if you're just starting out, whereas getting a couple of these gets you uh, 
you know, started and uh, seeing if you're really into this whole beading thing before you really invest some big money. So thread is really important. Never, ever, ever use sewing thread. Sewing thread is going to break with the beads. Uh, this kind of thread is actually designed specifically for be beads. You can see it's shiny, it's smooth, it's less likely to uh, break or get cut by the little facets inside the beads. Really important to use the right materials for the job. Now I'm not talking about candy with this, um, although these are delicious. Um, I'm talking about the tin. You know, you can spend a lot of money on some fancy needle contraptions and holders and boxes. Um, one thing I do recommend for holding your needles that you're currently using is one of these magnetic needle boxes. Such a lifesaver. Like seriously, they are great. They stay in there. So heaven forbid that comes open in the middle of your pack, your needles are going to stay put safe. They stay sharp. It's lovely. But what about all of the envelopes? If you buy envelopes of needles, this is fantastic. Look at all the needles. I have little packages in there. Um, not a uh, big surprise. I am definitely a John James needle fan for where I live and the accessibility, but I've got lots of great needles all in here inside this tin. Great for traveling. It's not going to get crushed and the needles are nice and safe. Um, I actually got this at a recycle center. It cost me literally nothing and uh, yeah totally worthwhile keep your eyes open even like fun tins that you might get um like for example um my daughter got an uh, easter treat on this after eight tin you know this is a great tin i'm not not sure what we use it for yet i gotta clean it up still has a little bit of sticky residue but something like this could be a really great little travel kit you could fit lots of your little doodads in there put an elastic around the outside just to make sure it doesn't pop open and you've got a really great little travel kit. You know, just think outside the box. Another thing you should have in your kit are good scissors. So I have three pairs here I'm showing you. These ones, um, now they are Fiskars brand. I'm not getting paid by Fiskars to say anything. I just really like their scissors. They're an okay price point. They last a decent amount of time. These ones here I use for things like fabric and hide. Um, never ever cut paper with them. If I'm cutting any paper products, I use these inexpensive school scissors. They just do the job fine. I like the fact that this one has a little ruler on the blade. It's pretty cool. Uh, but these ones, they actually have like a protective sheath, so it's great. I can carry it in my bag and not worrying about stabbing anything or myself. And then these ones I really like. Um, a lot of beaters will have a little pair of snips like this. These fold up. So they actually... Do -do 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 -do. They fold up really nice, and they're great travel scissors. I uh, usually always have a pair on me somewhere. Um, I have quite a few. They're also inexpensive, um, comparably to other types of scissors. Um, what I like about them is uh, you can travel with them. The only place I couldn't travel with them was within Australia, but everywhere else I've traveled, these scissors have been fine on my flights and on trains and buses. And uh, they're just really nifty and they, uh, they're they pretty comfortable to work with considering how small they are. I also like the fact that they have a little loop. So you could tie that on to um, a thread or uh, a lanyard or something and keep that. Uh, your scissors are going to be your best friend. If you have bad scissors, you're going to have a really bad experience because when you're cutting things like, again, hide or even just your interfacing, um, cutting the interfacing, if it's not clean, it gets really kind of um, kind of almost like frayed out and fluffy. It's really hard to beat on. And then of course, cutting your threads, having a really good th a pair of scissors to cut your thread so you get a clean cut, which makes threading your needle so much easier. Um, and then again, cutting that paper. So when I do something like this, I actually cut the, the, in the interfacing or the felt first and then I will stitch my paper on top. Then I trim the paper off using these scissors. And then I'll stitch like this one. I'm using a little bit of abalone shell. I'll stitch something in the, that onto the middle. But um, a good pair of scissors is really the, uh, the point, the tool that has either a good beading experience or a bad beading experience. And for this video, last but not least, is a lighter. Now this one is pretty bashed up. Um, I am not a hockey fan. It's just the lighter that I have. I've had it for quite some time. Uh, I don't smoke. 
um, but I use this for melting threads. The polyester or the nylon threads that we use in beading is basically plastic and uh, after you tie a knot you can actually melt your knot to secure it if it's in the right place to do so. So for example when I'm doing edging pieces like this when I get to the very end and I have my two threads left over I'm actually going to use the lighter to melt that knot which kind of like almost glues it in, sp in spot and it's never going anywhere ever again. I use this a lot in moccasin making as well when I'm tying off those threads. Really fantastic tool to have. Um, obviously not something you can travel with so if you are going to travel make sure you check your kit otherwise you could have some unhappy surprises when you're going through uh, inspection or customs but um, something I always have with me and yes I have loaned it to people who do smoke, and yes, I have used it when I brought my kit camping. So uh, not just useful for beading, but also useful for other life things. Really great to have.